So we start with the question, does the story of Final Fantasy XIV live up to the hype? The answer is yes, but for one primary reason, that is because the developers decided that it was going to continue Shadowbringers in the most fan service way possible. What was the number one sign of that exactly? What you're seeing on the screen at this time. When I first saw Emek, I got really hyped. Then it was like, okay, Emek will appear and then disappear. It's a cameo. They're just trying to give us a nod that they recognize how much we love the character. So here's something to kind of boost the story up as we move on to the new thing. But that's not exactly what happened. What happened was the next part, which was also probably one of my favorite about his appearing, was he did something so characteristic of Emek was the way he stared out at your character, almost in this way of, I acknowledge that you're here, but you shouldn't be here. I'm not gonna let it slide because I'm Emek, blah, 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 blah. But then as the story goes on, you start to realize that's not what's happening, that this isn't a cameo appearance. This is an actual part of the service of the story. I'm imagining that the dev team realized that there was a portion of fans and probably a portion of non-fans that made Final Fantasy legendary simply because of the presence of Emek. And they thought to themselves, well, you like this guy? Then we're going to give you this character and tie him into the end game. Or maybe we'll give you this character until you're sick of him so that we won't have to hear about him anymore. However, as Hoshi would say, comma, this brings me to my first criticism. If you can't create a better villain, then don't kill them off. And in Walker, there was no villain that surpassed Xenos, for example, sadly, or pathetically, I should say. I mean, how hard is it to make a villain better than a battle-crazed maniac? Because Metara was not it. Don't even joke. And quite honestly, I don't even remember the names of most of the other villains in the story. So what did they do instead? Xenos, the last boss you fight in Endwalker, because everyone was looking forward to a third fight between the Warrior of Light and him. Right? No. <laughs> it's because they couldn't make anything better than Xenos, and that in of itself was stupid. Uh, as Labrea might say, pathetic. <laughs> they could not surpass Xenos and thus made him the final boss character after he committed suicide for no good effing reason. That's really bad writing in my opinion. You have a character commit suicide and then you bring him back. And to this day, I cannot wrap around my mind why they had Xenos kill himself. I don't understand it. I don't get it and do anything for the story. When I saw him kill himself, uh, the only thing running through my head was why? Why did you do this? Why are you killing one of the only good villains that you had? I hadn't even played Shadowbringers yet, and I I just, I could not understand why they would kill him or how they were going to surpass him. And Walkers wasn't even uh, conceived of at that time as far as I knew about it. But it was just like, why did you kill this character? It just seemed like the most stupid thing you can possibly do. And then they proved my point in Endwalker, they're wrapping up the story with the character they had kill himself. Which makes me question, did you have somebody else in mind but didn't realize that that character was boring like most of your villains in Final Fantasy XIV? And so we're going to make him the final boss. Then they did it again with Emek, except they realized that this character is larger than life, and so they gave him one of the biggest parts of the story, if not the best. No, I will say he was the best part of the story. Hermes was the closest thing they got to a Xenos or Emek, but it didn't quite accomplish that. But you could see this guy Hermes turning into a villain from probably a mile away. They did slightly, but I had my suspicions about Metara from the beginning. But it did make me question the creativity of the writers. If the point of killing off the villains constantly was to push yourself to create greater ones, then this failed twice. They failed twice by reason of Emek and Zenos. Another important point to point out here is that I think the creators of Final Fantasy XIV, Square Enix, due to the success of Final Fantasy VII and the controversy, the supposed fan's inability to get over her death, 
and there, there have been many theories and game codes and all type of stuff uh, conjured up so that people would think that Ares was not dead because they understood the impact that death had on fans of beloved characters they've cheaply used it in Final Fantasy 14 and they've ruined the power of it and that's one way in which they, the, the writers really harmed the story and unfortunately I think most future games now it doesn't there is no when a character dies, the question will always exist: Will this character come back again? <laughs> you know, it, it's not it's not as impactful when a character comes back. Did they bring Emek back? You can argue they didn't, but you can also argue he did. He played a major role in the majority of the story, in one way or another. Even towards the end, when you fight the final boss. Uh, so that kind of that kind of ruins the impact that death can have. So do the creators of Final Fantasy 14 and Walker get a pass or fail? Do the villains get a pass or fail? I'm gonna say that the villains get a pass because they're great villains, even if they were cheaply used, so to speak. I think Zeno's got a downgrade. I will still give it a pass. However, as far as the writers are concerned and the way they use the villains, they get a fail. This is Deep Mind 255 out.